we wanted it, of course, to be a UK industry task force. And we went to the British government in the early process and said, look, why don't you sit down with us and do what we're doing, which is a serious-minded business threat assessment of this high-consequence issue. Now, you may think it's low risk, or as we were told in the Department of Trade and Industry, no risk, zero risk. That's what we were told by the chief economist and her team. Um, but, you know, surely the responsible thing is to at least have a discussion. But they said no, um, and they told us that, you know, there are 40 years of supplies and the discoveries were outstripping all the rest of it. Every mantra that Exxon and BP and others uh, had put in their heads. And towards the end of the meeting, the chief economist said to me, said to us, um, you know, if you're worried about conventional oil, what about unconventional oil? I mean, all the trillions of barrels of oil there are in the tar sands, how can you possibly worry in the face of that? To which I responded, well, yeah, uh, maybe, but if you, I mean, what's the government's view of the flow rates from the tar sands by 2015? You know, it's a million barrels or so today at the time. What's the British government's view as to what's going to be produced? At which point she, for it was a she, sat back in her chair and came over all, you know, I'm only the chief economist, I don't do detail, um, and looked at her three junior officials who all looked at each other. And that was the point at which we realized that these people who are essentially in charge of British energy policy and therefore national security had no idea to within an order of magnitude what the flow rates were going to be from the tar sands. So uh, I said, well, they're going to be two, maybe two and a half million barrels a day. At which point one of the young ex uh, officials leant back in his chair, wrinkled up his nose and said, oh, Dr. Leggett, those are your figures. I said, no, I'm sorry. If you do it the tiniest bit of checking, you'll find they're the Canadian oil industry's figures. <clears throat> so, you know, this is, this is gross national irresponsibility at the level of, of officialdom. Um, and then, of course, we get to the point where finally they can't ignore it any longer because with people like Branson um, and Ian Marchant from Scottish and Southern, you know, one of the big six energy companies, mouthing off to the national press, there has to be a response. And eventually we do, long afterwards, uh, get a meeting with the Secretary of State, Chris Hune. And some of you know uh, this story. Uh, there was a period when I, I didn't tell it for reasons of, I don't know, British Reserve or something, but now my attitude is, I've, well, <laughs> I tell it. Uh, so we, we had a meeting with him, six uh, very senior executives, or more exactly five senior executives and myself in a room with the Secretary of State. And the long and short of the meeting is that he says during the course of the meeting, okay, I get it, what you want is an oil shock response plan, um, to which Ian March and our spokesman uh, said that's exactly what we want, Secretary of State, ideally some accelerated proactive action, but if we can't do anything, let's at least have a plan so that if we're right, we've got a few ideas on the table for the people who have to clear up the mess. <clears throat> So he says, okay, well, look, that's easy enough to do. Why don't you write to me and suggest how we do it? So this is on a, a Friday, and we go out onto the pavement, and all these senior executives get very excited and say, let's put out a press release. Um, and uh, they all head off back to their corporate headquarters. Eventually, a press release emerges. It doesn't make it for the Saturday morning papers. Uh, and, of course, by Sunday and Monday, is deemed ancient news, so it didn't really create the kind of um, splash that we did with the report. And on Monday, we get a phone call from the senior civil servant, the head of international energy security at the Department of Energy and Climate Change. He said, we did not agree to an oil shock response plan. Why did you say that? So we say, you must have been in a totally different meeting. Uh, we heard the Secretary of State say it very clearly. And, um, Indeed, he asked us to write to him to suggest the modalities for the task force. So we write to him, thank you very much. So the chairman, John Miles from Arup, writes to the Secretary of State. And six weeks later, we get a, a letter from the Secretary of State saying, we didn't agree to, to an oil shock response plan. So 
This shows you what can happen even when you get politicians who momentarily get persuaded to do something. The power of the incumbency behind the closed doors of Whitehall is, is obviously pretty vast. And for those of you who know the um, British comedy, I mean, it's supposed to be a comedy series. I don't find it at all funny. Yes, Minister, it's too close to the bone to me. I mean, this is Yes, Minister on speed. And it's the real world in which we live.